Hello everybody, this is Valencia and welcome to my channel, Balloons and Business, where I show you the business of balloon and event decor. Today I'm going to show you how I made this faux wood wall out of peel and stick vinyl wallpaper. I think this is a great alternative to a real wood panel wall. It is less expensive to make and it is easier to carry and to transport. So if you want to see how I made this, just stay tuned. So I'm starting out with a quarter inch thick plywood board. This was originally eight feet tall by four feet wide. I had it cut at Home Depot to six and a half feet and I kept the width of four feet. Now, since this is only a quarter of an inch thick, this is a little flimsy. So if you would like to use like a half an inch thick plywood board or even an inch, that's up to you. It does get more heavier in weight as you increase the thickness. Then I purchased four of these two by two inch furring strips to support the back of my wall. Now these strips come in eight feet long increments. So I had three of them cut to six feet and then another one cut in half. So I ended up with two four feet pieces and three six feet pieces. And you can get all of that done at Home Depot. Now I will be using this brown wall pill and stick vinyl wallpaper to put on my plywood board. And I got this off of Amazon and I purchased four of these rolls for this project. And all of my supplies and things that I use will be in the description box below this video. So I started off by unrolling the vinyl wallpaper and laying it across the board. Notice I'm leaving about an inch of the wallpaper out on the sides and up at the top. Then once I get it to the length I want, I'm gonna cut it off of the roll. And then I'm gonna start peeling the very end of that vinyl wallpaper off from its backing. Now I'm not gonna take the whole thing off, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna place it onto the board and using my hands, I'm going to smooth it out onto the board because I'm trying to smooth out all of the bubbles and everything like that. And I'm gonna slowly start pulling the backing out while smoothing it out onto the board. And I wanna do this to make sure I'm getting all of those bubbles and also to make sure that the um, vinyl is not coming out crooked, okay? You just wanna take your time So as you see, I left the edges out at the top, a little bit of edge out on the side, and I'm just gonna fold those under. But I did that because I wanna make sure in case the vinyl was coming out crooked, that I had enough vinyl to make sure it covered the whole plywood board and I didn't have some of the plywood showing. So now I'm just folding the excess vinyl underneath the board to make it look nice and neat on the edges. So you just wanna repeat this process over again just measuring out how much you need, leaving a little bit of excess on the edges so you can fold that under. And then you just wanna take a little bit of the vinyl off of the backing. You don't wanna take the entire vinyl off of its backing because it will be very difficult to stick it onto the board without all the bubbles and wrinkles. One thing I did was place my knees on the vinyl as I was um, putting it onto the board and smoothing it out because I noticed that the vinyl was starting to get crooked as I was taking the backing off. So by putting my knees on the vinyl, it was keeping it straight. So here's what the wall looks like so far with the wood vinyl on it. So don't mind my son playing on the wall. <laughs> so I'm gonna take one of my six foot fern strips and I'm going to add some wood glue to it and just pour it on generously from top to bottom. 
and then carefully place it onto the board on the edge about three inches from the edge and then you're going to want to get uh, some heavy weight to put on top of this so that brick over there on the right it's not heavy enough so I ended up replacing it with a heavier piece of brick so I'm going to be adding another six foot fern strip on the other side of the wall and I'm adding some cinder blocks on both sides to make sure I have enough pressure for that strip to stick. Now you wanna let these sit for at least 12 hours. The next day I decided to add an additional furring strip down the center and let that sit for another 12 hours. And now I'm gonna be taking some wood screws and two metal brackets that I got from Home Depot and I'm going to screw them on the two outer furring strips. And this is to create stability at the base. Once I'm done screwing in both of my brackets, I'm gonna take one of the four feet furring strips and I'm gonna connect the two brackets together with that strip. Then I'm gonna get the other four foot furring strip and do the same thing. As you can see, I use both of the four foot strips to connect the brackets so that I can put my weights on top. And that provides security at the base of the wall. Now notice my tallest brackets are only about 12 to 14 inches high. And that little bracket in the middle is much too short to provide any real support for this wall. So I had to find a way to provide support for this wall towards the top and not just at the bottom. So I got these dry wood screws and I chose them because their dark color would match with the wall better than like the silver screws. And I want to screw the furring strips to the wall. I didn't just want the furring strips to be connected by the wood glue. I wanted to also use screws for extra support. Just a note, if you do not want these screws to be visible, you can do this step before putting the vinyl on the wall. That way the vinyl will cover up the screws. As you can see, the screws blend in with the wood facade and you know, makes it look more genuine in my opinion. So after further securing my furring strips, I decided to add two two by one inch strips of wood to the back of the board. And I'm gonna be using some number eight, one and a half inch screws to screw them in to the top of that furring strip right there to the bottom of the base. So that last strip right there at the base, I'm gonna be screwing it in at a 90 degree angle. And I'm doing this to create extra security at the top as I mentioned before. So first I'm pre-drilling a hole into that two by one inch strip. And then I'll go ahead on and screw it in. Just to show you a more up close view of it, I'm pre-drilling that hole right there into the strip. And then I'm putting the screw in that pre-drilled hole and then screwing it inside. And this is how the strip will look. So this is how the back of my board looks. I use three cinder blocks. They're about 15 pounds each. So that's about 45 pounds of weight. So this is the finished product to the faux wood wall. And again, this is six and a half feet tall by four feet wide. If you would like it taller, just don't cut the board when you get it from Home Depot. And if you want it longer, just make another one of these panels and then you can put the two of them together. So if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, go ahead on and like it and please subscribe and you'll get notifications on future videos on Balloon and the Vent Decor. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Tried and true.